I, you, came, you came here, so we might as well, right? Yeah. Hey, so, um, do we need to be here at 12 and at 6 too? No. Nobody needs to be here except me. Is this just for the public? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, what did they do over in, in Washington County? In Washington, I think they're going to do two. Uh, I thought they were going to do two today. Oh, we're, okay. Uh, and they did one last week. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah I missed Friday's meeting, so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I missed all this good stuff. So I, okay. it sh I'm like, why do we have three shared me? And I, and I, you know, I tried to. Yeah. No, it's only because the law requires me to do three before the panel votes, and the panel's going to vote tomorrow. So, so tomorrow's the big one. Um, it's the so I really need to see this for the vote. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Then you better I'd be your twin. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can we get a seat here? Yeah, go right here. Say wherever you want. Yeah. I What's your name? You. My name's Joe K. Joe K? Okay. That's right. What's yours? Ryan Moore. Thanks, man. Nice to meet you. Ben okay. Drisco, Brad McGowan. Okay. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming in bright and early. Yeah, it looks like uh, I'm one of the few people who care about about shared yeah. service. Saving money for the county? Yeah. I mentioned it at last night's uh, one called Common Council meeting, but of course uh, they take a couple of days before they get <laughs> the paper. But I did mention uh, next week, yeah. uh, next Wednesday and, and Friday. Uh, yeah, the hearings for the local yeah. lodge, yeah. No, I figured we'd do, uh, uh, we'd space these out for people's work schedules, you know? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, that was nice. Before work, Lunch time and, and at the end of the day. That's right. Yep. Yep. Try That's to make what sure. I figured it was. So, yep. uh, yeah. Yeah. I want to make sure people could come if they wanted to come. So. Maybe we should do that with the bag thing too. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Sarah, whenever you're ready. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Okay, so uh, we will now convene uh, the first public hearing for the Warren County Shared Services uh, Panel's Property Tax Savings Plan. I'll go through a brief presentation. Uh, first of all, uh, Warren County currently, uh, the shared services are no, uh, n nothing new here in Warren County. We already share many services with other counties. That includes our Office for the Aging, we share with Hamilton County, our Mental Health Department with Washington County, the DA's Drug Task Force with Washington County, the IDA with Washington County. We have a fire training center that we share with Washington County. Uh, we d we're developing a support services program for veterans with Washington County. Uh, that's for uh, vets that are recently coming back from service that are experiencing post-traumatic stress. Uh, Warren currently participates in the Mega Energy Purchasing Cooperative for electricity and gas. That includes, I think, 47 counties, if I'm not mistaken. It, it's most of the counties outside of New York, and as well as municipalities from all around the state, including some here in the county. Um, we do safety training classes, our self-insurance department, uh, risk management, that sort of thing, uh, to officials from uh, other counties as well as municipalities. And uh, our DSS, uh, Social Services Department, from time to time will uh, we'll help other counties out with children's services, child protective, uh, et cetera. Uh, we share services with our municipalities here within the county. Uh, we share highway maintenance services with, with most of them. We share purchasing services uh, with municipalities. That's an initiative started a couple of years ago by our shared services committee. We do have a dedicated uh, standing committee here in the county devoted to this stuff. Uh, and uh, we essentially developed a web portal for uh, other municipalities to see the contracts that are available to us that they can piggyback off of, as well as state contracts uh, and uh, common bids for, uh, for commodities. And we're in the process of extending that to fire districts. Our workers' compensation pool is shared with all but one municipality in the county, I believe. Uh, we have centralized civil service. Uh, I was down in Westchester, for instance, and they have three or four different civil service commissions. Some of the cities like to have their own. Uh, but here in Warren County, uh, the county provides that for all the municipalities as well as the schools. Uh, we share fuel farms with towns, with the city of Glens Falls, the village of Lake George, and some not-for-profits. Uh, we share planning and GIS services with our municipalities, code enforcement services we provide to municipalities, 
public health training, certification, education, and outreach we provide, emergency services, resources, guidance, and review of plans. Uh, we provide a countywide marine and tech rescue team through our emergency services department. Uh, and we consolidated public safety dispatching with uh, the city of Glens Falls. Also the Charles R. Wood Park and Festival Commons we maintain along with the village of Lake George. We share services with school districts. The Sheriff's Department uh, has established school resources officers. Uh, SUNY Adirondack, which is half owned by Warren County, half by Washington County, uh, has some collaboration with Queensbury and Glens Falls School Districts in the Early College Career Academy. Glens Falls and Queensbury School Districts share recreation programs, transportation, and facilities. And uh, most, if not all, of the school districts uh, in Warren County participate in a health insurance consortium through BOCES to save money on their employee health insurance. We're, we're also currently investigating uh, whether we can include school districts and BOCES in that purchasing cooperative that I mentioned earlier that we have with municipalities and fire districts. The idea is not quite ripe yet for inclusion in this initiative, but we're still working on it. Uh, and hopefully uh, uh, we'll get the opportunity to pursue shared services each year. Uh, and uh, hopefully we could do something with that uh, this time next year. Um, our, and also our municipalities share services amongst themselves. Warrensburg and Chester share an assessor. So do Bolton and Horican. Uh, the town and the village of Lake George share a whole mass of services. I've listed just some of them here. Uh, Lake Luzerne also shares services with the town of Hadley and Saratoga County. And this, by all means, none of these lists are, are all inclusive. These are just, you know, the low-hanging fruit examples that I pulled for this presentation, and uh, I didn't want to make it too, too long, but just to give you an idea of what we're already doing. Um, just uh, uh, the property tax levy right now, uh, 2018 for Warren County is uh, 43.7 million. And you can see that the county services, quote unquote, accounts for a minority of that. The rest is uh, state mandates that we really have no control over. So when we're talking about saving money through shared services, we're really only talking about uh, shrinking that 44.5%. And I will mention that that 44 0.5% does include things like the DA's office, the sheriff's department, the county clerk. These are state constitutional functions that uh, we don't have any other choice but to provide. So you can, you can say that these are state uh, uh, mandates, but you know, we'll, we'll count them as county services just to, for the benefit of the doubt, if you, if you can follow what I mean. Now here are some of the new initiatives that we've come up with for this year, for this shared services panel. You should know that none of the stuff that we're currently doing counts. Uh, the state wrote this law in such a way that we had to develop brand new initiatives. And uh, we can't start them before January 1st, 2019. Otherwise, we don't qualify for matching funds from the state. So for information technology, our IT department has offered to provide advisory services to any municipality that's interested, and that would include uh, network planning, uh, long-term planning, short-term help with, with implementing priorities, et cetera. Uh, and we have 11 municipalities that have expressed interest in being a part of that. IT purchasing services. Our IT department's very good about keeping up on all the state contracts, knowing how to get the best deal on equipment. 11 municipalities are going to participate in that. Um, utilization of our antivirus pricing, we have a great deal. Uh, it's uh, out for our licenses, something like $6.50. I do have the exact figure uh, in my packet here. But uh, it's a much better rate than most of uh, the entities uh, it, within the county can get. So eight municipalities are going to piggyback on that contract and save some money. Uh, DPW-related initiatives. Uh, our engineering department um, is willing to provide engineering services, uh, uh, not to, uh, necessarily on every project that municipalities uh, uh, have uh, on tap for next year, but where we uh, have expertise and where we have the resources to do it, we will uh, attempt to cooperate with uh, the municipalities and take over some of that work. Uh, nine municipalities have expressed interest in that. Equipment sharing. Uh, again, that's the, um, the, the portal that we developed to share pricing with all the municipalities. We're going to create a new section of that portal next year so that the county and all the municipalities can log their equipment, their heavy highway equipment. So when somebody needs a piece of equipment that they may not already have, 
rather than go out and buy it or rent it, they can consult this, uh, the web platform and see if they can borrow it from uh, one of their neighbors. Uh, Ten municipalities are going to participate in that. Um, and joint bid for landscaping and mowing. This doesn't uh, necessarily apply to Warren County, but the way some of the counties provide this service, if they're using contractors, they can do a cooperative bid and potentially save some money due to the volume of, uh, of uh, their work. And four municipalities are going to explore that next year. And three other new initiatives that we have. Uh, one is our tourism uh, department has offered to do more to establish a, a, a dedicated function uh, devoted to promoting local events. This will save localities some money. It will also, to the extent that localities might use their occupancy tax resources to do these programs, it will allow them to do more pr tourism promotion with those occupancy tax dollars, which uh, uh, should, should be good news for everybody trying to get more tourism action here in the county. Uh, the Smart Street Lighting Initiative, this is one thing that I'm very excited about. Uh, NIPA, the New York Power Authority, uh, statewide is offering a turnkey program where NIPA essentially acts as the administrator, uh, pooling uh, uh, labor bids, uh, pooling uh, equipment purchases for municipalities in this state to switch over their street lights to LED lights and also to purchase those street lights from the, the, uh, the uh, utility because currently most municipalities do not own these lights. They're paying maintenance fees every year to the utility just for the privilege of having the lights operate. And then they're also paying for the electricity. So this initiative will allow them to save on both the maintenance and the electricity. And NIPA is building financing projects that will allow uh, uh, the payments to be made out of the savings that the uh, communities realize each year with uh, a net positive for these communities each year. So again, that's probably the largest, well, it's not probably, definitely the largest return uh, uh, in terms of savings in this, uh, in this plan, and I'm excited about implementing that with NIFA's help. Uh, and uh, also, uh, all of the municipalities, to some extent, utilize credit card transactions, and uh, seven of them have expressed interest in, in pooling uh, together and, and hopefully getting a better deal from uh, the providers. Now, uh, we are required as part of the shared services panel to report certain metrics. This is one of them. Currently, the 2018 local government property tax levy in Warren County is $170 million. And you can see uh, how that breaks down. The county, the cities, the towns, and the villages are 38%. Special districts, these are lighting districts, refuse districts, uh, fire districts, et cetera. Uh, they amount to 2%. And school districts are 60% of that bill. Now, the entities that are participating in this initiative, uh, the state required all towns, cities, villages, and counties to participate. Uh, special districts are optional. School districts are optional. We do have some special districts participating. So out of, and, and you can see if I go back, um, the, count, the municipalities on their own are, are a little less than 65 million. So with the addition of the special districts, we get the 65.1, 65.2 million. Now here's the total anticipated savings from all those nine initiatives that I just outlined. In 2019, we anticipate 701,000. These are my projections. They're very conservative. I didn't want to overshoot it. 2020 uh, will be up to 973,000. And annually thereafter, um, just you know, a metric that in my mind doesn't make much sense because the number will change every year. but. Uh, uh, our best estimate is that is about a mil million, million one. Uh, savings as a percentage of the 2018 taxes of the participants that I just displayed. 2019 is a little over 1%. 2020, 1.5%. And annually thereafter is 1.6%. Anticipated savings to the, quote, average taxpayer. You, you might ask what that is. Uh, the state uh, tells us how we should calculate that. What we did here is we just took the overall property taxes, we divided it by the number of parcels uh, so that we're incorporating both residential and businesses. Obviously, it's imperfect because you know that some, uh, uh, some residents and some businesses own more than one parcel, but uh, it comes out to uh, 1562 uh, for 2019, 2167 for 2020, and annually thereafter 2347. 
probably understated because there's people in there and, and companies that are owning more than one parcel. And the anticipated effect on property taxes. Again, the state comes up with a formula that we have to use to report this metric. Uh, they require us to take all the participants, estimate how much property taxes would go up uh, for the next three years. For most of the towns, I estimated a 1.5% that's based on the, the allowable growth limit under the property tax levy, assuming that everybody keeps uh, uh, under the, the property tax uh, levy limit set by the state tax cap. Um, and so you assume a certain level of growth, and then the savings that result from the uh, shared services program, you back off of that growth. So this is what would happen in 2019. You'd have an increase of 0.4% rather than the one5 in 2020, you'd be basically break even, and annually thereafter, you save a little money. Uh, and at this point, if there's a member of the public that would like to uh, uh, speak, uh, ask, uh, make any comments, ask any questions, make any suggestions, now's your opportunity. If you just state your name and uh, your town, uh, the floor is yours. Sir. Yeah, I'm Joe Kay. I live in Falls. Um, under Mr. Fix community services, where would the probation department fall under that? Is that a fixed service at a certain... In terms of a mandate? In terms of how much they spend. Uh, well, uh, the, it, it's a mandated service. The state uh, uh, says you have to have probation services, and uh, how we staff the office, how we supply the office with resources is at the county's discretion, but we do have to maintain a certain level of service. All right, the reason I inquire is because I feel like uh, I was used as a pawn by the probation department for around five years to sit as a member of our illustrious drug board, to sit in the waiting room of the family court area three, four, five years ago, uh, all day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, they forced us to sit here. And this created the effect that it was overcrowded. And because of the, uh, the seemingly effect of overcrowding, somebody authorized a $17 million expenditure for a larger family court waiting room. And I'm like, this is totally ridiculous. And I'm just wondering who are these county super, Warren County supervisors who did rubber stamp the uh, expenditure? This was part of the uh, court expansion yeah. that just happened? Yeah. Okay, okay, well, we can look into that. Yeah, I'm just, I was just blown away by that. Mm -hmm. because, uh, I could see that, I could see what was happening. And, uh, you know, believe the probation department for setting up, I mean, you walk into the probation department, you walk down a big empty hallway with classrooms on both sides that are empty. And I asked, oh, well, why is the old school empty? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, they store chairs in one of the, one of the buildings, one of the rooms. You know, it's, it's preposterous. They have the drug court office down the raw hallway. Mm -hmm. That should have been down in the probation department. Mm -hmm. Instead, they have it down the main hallway. Mm -hmm. So all, all the people on their stupid, lousy little 10-minute check-ins, the 50 people subjected to that drug court had to sit in the family court waiting area mm -hmm. all day Monday for, for hours on end for a lousy two minutes. And I felt really bad for these people coming in that were in family court, you know, young mothers with their babies and, and, and so on. That, uh, they had no place to sit. And they're kind of traumatized, you know, because they're going to this family court. And we got a bunch of jamokes in there from drug court sitting in there uh, making noise and this and that. And it's really inappropriate. And I couldn't figure out why the drug court office was in the wrong hallway and why they forced us to sit in there, and why they, uh, you had to, had to build this new uh, courtroom or new family waiting area, whatever this waste of $17 million is. So um, I think that's, that should be addressed. <coughs> um, and then another thing to shared services. While I was, I had an appointment with an attorney here, right in this hallway, right down here, about a month ago. And um, the attorney representing the county was 
Murphy Burns, Tom Murphy from Loudonville, from the Loudonville firm. I said, well, wait a minute. Don't they have two county attorneys? I mean, what are they not competent enough to represent the county? I have, I have, a, I have a lawsuit against the probation department. Mm -hmm. So they had to go out and hire a, a $300 to $500 per hour attorney, Tom Murphy, from Loudonville, this Loudonville firm, to represent them with their boondoggle because they put me in prison for 14 months I was mandated for walking a dog. And I took it to court. I won the case on the state Supreme Court, overruled it. All seven judges said I should have never been incarcerated. Mm -hmm. I was incarcerated for over 400 days from this probation department. So you're looking at a $5 million lawsuit that I put in this February. Now we have this Loudonville firm that you're paying $500 an hour to to represent. I, uh, I let them off easy. I said, oh, all right, just for all the expenses and everything I had to go through, I lost my business. My house is in foreclosure. I've had a business in Brent's Falls for the last 25 years, laminate the frame. I had to close that because I couldn't even, I, I couldn't, I wasn't there for almost two years. Uh, it, it's just so preposterous that they had, they're hiring another firm. But now this guy does not care about settling out of court. He wants to take it to trial, which is fine. They'll take two or three weeks of trial. They can charter a bus. I can bring down every probation officer in this county down to Albany, down to the federal court, and we can sit there for two or three weeks, and we can fight it. We can make a, make a real big expenditure. And, of course, he'll get $100,000 out of it for two or three weeks sitting in court. So uh, I think that's something you can address. Um, you know, so... Um, I can give you some information, a little bit on it. Sure. And if you, you have your contact me. info as well. Yes, I have my, my number on here. Great. And, uh, let me see what it's right. But all these savings, the 17 million, it's going to take a lot of savings to make up for this family court. Now, granted, this guy, guy Judge Green, is not a real confident family court lawyer. So then you had to go out and hire another family court judge to cover his back off. Well, that, that should be cleared up by now. So I don't know why you need two family court judges. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know why you need all these probation officers. You could have, when per a person goes on probation, a much more effective way, if you give them a card with a number, and they have to call in for drug testing at a number every day, and the computer could take care of basically what 50 probation officers do. They see you once a month, you walk down the hallway, you sit in your office, they either drug test you or they don't. How you doing? Everything's fine. Bye. See you next month. We'll give you another slip. But if, as an oversight, you know, to monitor these people better, the, uh, a computer in a drug testing if where they have to call a number and they have to randomly get drug tested, which would be very rare because there's a lot of people, but the fear of getting drug tested on that day is enough to make them not drink or drug because the drug tests show up that within a couple of days. So, I mean, and it would eliminate all the, this whole probation department is just a waste of money. And they don't do anything to what they're supposed to be doing to try to reintegrate you back into society. So I, I think that you should address this problem, uh, useless or useless. Head of the probation department about these concerns. I, I'll discuss these uh, with uh, Bob as well as the county attorney. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you for coming. That's all I want to say. All right. I uh, appreciate I'll it. I will give this to you. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. See you. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Any comments from uh, supervisors? Uh, the only comment I had is that, uh, you know, on one of your pies there, it was the 44.5%, uh, you yeah. know, which is the county expenses. It's generous. But <laughs> it's very generous yeah. because the pie I looked at is really only 17% yeah. is what we can work on. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, uh, that comes from our truth and taxation flyer that we publish each year after the budget's adopted. But um, there's an asterisk next to that 44.5%. Uh, Thank you.
Nice, nice meeting, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's an asterisk. It includes the sheriff's department. Got to have that health services. Oh yeah, you no, you're absolutely right. I mean, once you break down the yeah. things, is yeah. you know what's mandatory and what's not. But you know, I always say is, geez, uh, we have to shave our budget. We have, but really, yeah. it's only 17. That's like 26 million dollars yeah. from you know, round up that we actually physically can work in on a 154 million dollar budget. It, it's that's very a lot of money. And that's, in my opinion, the, the, it, uh, this is my opinion alone. But that's you know, kind of the fallacy behind this whole concept is, is county governments have been strapped for years and our ability to raise the money to pay for the costs that are out of our control is limited by the tax cap. So to the extent that we can save money from shared services, we've been doing it. You saw the, the list of everything that's already happening. So the low hanging fruit is gone. Uh, and uh, this is a useful exercise to beat the bushes and see what else might be out there that we can do. But, uh, well, teaming up with the uh, the multiple uh, municipalities is really, and, the, and you know, and shared equipment. I mean, no sense having a piece of equipment that we use once a year. Right. You know what I'm saying? When we can share it and vice versa. And right. You know, and it, <coughs> I used to work on glass handling machines where, you know, it's become, they're very expensive to buy. But what they're finding out is, you know, let's rent them. Yeah. So now we've got a fleet of that they rent, you know, and then it's well, well, we need a guy to operate it, and it, and it's come into another whole world. So, yeah. you know, renting has its benefits. Um, you know, you don't have the upkeep, you don't have this, you don't have this. So I I I think uh, today's presentation, uh, once again, you're spot on. Um, I am really uh, amazed with your vast knowledge. I like the way you speak, <laughs> um, and I'm and I was quite impressed with uh, with uh, what we did, and I'm sorry I missed Friday. So. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. And I think I'm so excited I might even try to come back tonight to see <laughs> if we have a better, <laughs> better, a better crew. I'll bring your coffee. You might fall asleep. <laughs> but, uh, well, ben? Not that, nothing against uh, Ben over here. Not a better crew. I mean, but <laughs> more, more, uh, more public. Uh, well, you're not obligated to. You just, yeah. just know that. Brian, years ago, um, Accounting used to um, uh, help a lot of not a lot of not for profits with um, uh, printing. Mm -hmm. uh, is there still a um, uh, a print department or? There is, there is. I, I oversee it actually. The administrator's office, Connie Van Ness, runs it down in the okay, basement. Okay, right. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do uh, do we do anything for? Um, for municipalities or for um, for entities that you know. I I believe we do, um, and I'll I'll check in with Connie and see if we can get a list together. Okay, I was, I was yeah. curious. Yeah. Also, uh, the sixty percent of um, of the uh, uh, the county uh, uh, tax still being uh, uh, city, uh, uh, school taxes. Mm -hmm. um, is that consistent? Uh, I always, I thought that a couple of years ago, 2016, Glen Falls uh, school tax was about uh, about 49% of their their total budget. Mm -hmm. is, is that does that mean that that um, that other school districts are are, are higher or? I think uh, it depends on how they're spending their money. That's usually how the school aid formula works. Uh, uh, the, the types of initiatives they have, the, the, the equipment purchases, it all, all gets factored into the school aid formula. And whatever they can't get from the state, uh, they'll make up with the tax levy or with savings. Essentially, the state is double dipping because we're, whether we're paying for a uh, uh, school through our, our county taxes or for And, and one of the problems that I found, and I sat down with several superintendents uh, who operate districts within the county, one of the problems I found was that if they spend less money on certain activities, they get less school aid. <laughs> so the incentive is not necessarily there for them to participate. Uh, they, they do a lot through BOCES because when they save money through BOCES, 
they get enhanced uh, reimbursement through the school aid formula. So uh, one of the angles that I've been looking at to potentially get these school districts involved in our cooperative purchasing is to do it through BOCES. Uh, if we can get BOCES as a partner in that and then have the districts uh, jump onto the BOCES piece, then potentially, they, but it, it's, it just shows you the, the, state's, the state's rules can sometimes get in the way. Well, I, I hate to say go on record, but uh, <laughs> the tax bills just came in on the properties I have, Queensbury and in Glen Falls. And let me tell you, <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's scary. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, and it's heartbreaking to say as well, if we don't use it, we don't get it back yeah. or we don't get enough. And, um, but it's all coming you know, and I know Queensbury had an opportunity to change something, but they, they rolled it over into another capital, you know, project. So I, you know, it just... And I don't knock it, and I'm not knocking education, yeah. but, uh, you know, it's... I do think the superintendents, uh, the ones that I talk to, do a really good job, and, and they want to they wanna participate. We just got to figure out how. And how, and I, and I think that's a good motto. I mean, yeah. why wouldn't it? It's all yeah. part of the community, yeah. and, and we all share it. So right. I think that's... Uh, right. If you need any help there, uh, let me know, and... Uh, you Appreciate know, it. I'll muscle up. All right. <laughs> If that's all, um, we will close this public hearing. Thank you. Aye. <laughs>